Uh, my brother-in-law knows the owner, and they've gone to a bunch of games. I, I, I would like to do that. Oh, we're live. That we are live, I think. Um, just pretend no one's there. If you, I know you're nervous. Mm -hmm. This is your this first, is first time of, yeah. It's like we're popping your online <laughs> cherry mm -hmm. here. Hey, everybody in TV live land. Well, hello. Or one person, whoever's there, as people start to come forth. Dad. Oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> it is neat when my mom's, my mom, um, like, will tune in sometimes. She's like, I watched, how, how do I do the streaming of you guys on mm -hmm. YouTube? Is, is it streaming? I'm like, no, it's not. It's, just, it's always streaming, mom. I'll get, like, my, my wife's, like, aunt's really love me, and they will go in the chat and they'll defend people that say mean things to me, which never turns out great. <laughs> no, it doesn't It doesn't work out well. Oh, hey, Eric. What's up, Eric? And Eric? That's two Eric, Eric. Eric. Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, you see? Move it around. Luthinger. But, um, so, Jeremy, the guitar hunter. Hey, everybody. From Jeremy the Guitar Hunter, the fantastically famous YouTube channel. And he has an Instagram thing, too. And I think he's starting an OnlyFans as well. <laughs> yeah. Is mm -hmm. that, that's for adults only, isn't it's it? It's just double chin, double shot, upper. And so we're doing feet mm -hmm. only. You, you, you got to find your, got to find your angle. Well, Derek's, Derek's been like long wanting to have like a thing where we just, we show all of our feet and like people have to guess like the feet of Casino. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mark Myers in the comments. Saying, Mark. hey -o. Oh, is that Mark Myers? Mike Lee. Is that, Mike Lee, are you my friend, Mike Lee? There, have, there can't be just So Mark one. lives near you, actually. He lives down in Florida. Um, <laughs> in the land of massive traffic and and horrible, horrible, too many amounts of people. I okay, like. yeah. He, he, he retired down in Florida. I wish he would just come back to North Carolina. You're like, Carolina. there's 30 million people and two roads out. That's, that's the worst. I don't know who retires to Florida anymore. It's just like, Mark, what are you thinking? Come over here. I um, know. Like, oh, look at that. Miguel makes music. Morgan! I, I had forgotten about Morgan Jeremy's Crom channel. is here. <laughs> He'd forgotten about you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'd forgotten about him too. I sort of, it's like that um, that ex girlfriend that you don't want your wife to find out about is sort of Jeremy. Okay, I'll take it's that. I've been called worse. A little, a little naughty, a little yeah. dirty, dirty tips to finding guitars out there. Yeah. Um, so Morgan, sure, welcome. Morgan's sure. a friend of mine from Philly, and yeah, and we've done we've hung out a bunch. I thought you were gonna say this was a cool cross dresser, but that just, too. That, he's not a cross dresser. Morgan, that's awesome. And Surinder's a good friend of ours, and Surinder. Yeah. Surrender, um, I think one of your pedals that you sent us here, it was funny, the, the rep from Yamaha was here yesterday, just driving through, he's like, hey, how did you guys get one of these? I'm like, we have our ways. We got our guy. Our ways name is Surrender. <laughs> so, Surrender. You, you got talked about the Yamaha, he was really confused. Because you guys aren't Yamaha dealers, like, I want you to be, but I'm like, well, maybe. We'll talk about it in the future, you know? Yeah. They're, they, got, they have cool guitars. Like yeah. $4,000 acoustics. What? I know. They're awesome. Uh, yeah, the FGX three and five and the eight. They're, they're hard to remember the numbers. Um, good morning, John. Good morning, Morgan. Um, no, they are hard, but he brought some cool guitars. So Jeremy's down here from Virginia. And I remember that this is, uh, I, I don't remember what I had the catchphrase, but it's, we, we went to Virginia to visit some friends and I told my kids, like, you have to say this certain thing to Virginians because <laughs> they speak differently. They sure. have classic Southern voices. <laughs> and like, uh, oh, I, I know what it is. I said, like, when you meet a Southerner from Virginia, you have to say, I do declare. <laughs> I did, so they were going around. That's the wrong direction. I, but I, they didn't know. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. They were like, I, I was like, this is the home of the Confederates. This is the birth of, even though that's South Carolina. But, <laughs> um, but they don't know these things. I confuse them. I do declare I would like some biscuits, please. <laughs> I do declare. That's what it was. My wife's going to be so happy. We couldn't remember it until this ah, moment. That's so oh, good. perfect. I was trying to think ah. of it. So, um, no, but Jeremy has this great YouTube channel. You work with a cool little shop, too. Yeah, Hometown Music. It's a great shop. If you haven't checked out Hometown Music, um, what, what town's that again? It's in Harrisonburg. I love Harrisonburg. It's a weird place. It's a fun college town. It's a cool town. There, uh, so it's, there's it's a the heart of Appalachia. <laughs> heart of Appalachia. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So my uh, the ho my hometown. I moved back there a couple of years ago. Um, it's like this like old school music town, like like grungy DIY yes. music scene. So one of the houses is just getting shut down. It's called Crayola. It has been there forever. The Refused played there. Like. Insane bands have played there over the years. It has been a show house since 1977. This is sort of the opposite of, we're in Southern Pines, North Carolina. This is kind of a, I'd say almost a resort town, it feels like. It's, or an upstate New York fancy town. Then Pinehurst is definitely a resort town. Mm -hmm. Then Aberdeen is kind of our more cool, they call it the up and coming town, they okay. call it. But it's, it's the three are all together. But Jeremy has, he works a great shop up there, Hometown Music, has a great channel that we just flashed across the thing. 
I highly recommend you subscribe to it. It's fun and it's actually useful. Unlike this channel, you learn <laughs> tips on how to buy guitars. Like, what do you do? Uh, yeah, so I teach people how to buy the right guitars, uh, how to get the best deal. I focus on a lot of things. I just kind of highlight things that I'm really into. I really love old Martins, love old Gibsons. I'm more on the acoustic side of life. And, uh, and then I tell, teach people how to get rid of the guitars that are in the way of you having the right guitar collection. So strategies yeah. on selling, current market trends, and conversations on how to and sell stuff. Do you stuff. still have your program that people can purchase? I do, yeah. I have a, I have a course called Write Guitars Faster, which is... Right guitars. So just, buy, for, just for right-handed. Buy the right guitars, sell the wrong guitars, build a collection that matters. <laughs> Look at Derek, have that pulled up immediately. Look at that. Well, it's, it's all on my website, that front page. Make him sound like a wizard to me. I'm amazed by his skills. Well, the wizard hat does make him look like a wizard. Um, no, yeah, so you do, you help people in the journey, because it's a tricky journey, and it's ever evolving. Yeah. It's changed, I think, dramatically in the past two years again. Yeah. It's sort of shifted, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. So like, that's just a, a little tiny taste of it. Like, what mm -hmm. would you do if you're like, you're talking to me, it's my first time buying a guitar on the internet. Oh, yeah. I've never done it. I yeah. want to get like a vintage Gibson acoustic. Oh, have you owned a vintage before? No. Oh gosh. So you're gonna aim. You are headed straight towards the affordable vintage Gibson acoustics. I don't Gibson want affordable. Acoustics. I have money. I okay. want to spend. I want to spend six to ten thousand okay. dollars. Okay. Okay. Vintage Gibson acoustics. So you wouldn't be in the seventies. You'd no. be in the sixties or fifties. Um, man. So the the first bit of advice I would say is, you are not ready. You're not ready for the big risk. So you should not buy from a single person. Okay. You should not buy from a, you know an estate that someone is selling off, um, unless you have owned other vintage guitars and you have the repairs and you have a service person or a, a luthier. So you're closer. saying to buy from a like authorized sales place or yeah, I would yeah I would shop. say from a reputable shop, and so with that like, the discount that comes off that price is, like. A person is able to sell a guitar cheaper than a shop that has a reputation that can be ruined or a service person. So you're going to pay a little more, but you'd be in that six to ten range. All of a sudden, you open up to really cool options. You know, you start getting into uh, J185 territory. You get into cooler than just a J45 or a Southern or I, Jumbo. Or I get like four '90s Taylors. Hey, there you go. 1995 all the way. Z, if you're out there watching, I, I know you just got one. Congratulations. But I'm gonna get an older guitar. I'm gonna 90s is too new. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting one in the decade I was born. But isn't it funny that <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny that so like when we were first obsessing about guitars in the 90s and 2000s, mm -hmm. the old stuff was 30 years older. Like, and yeah, and now you're like, okay, well, no. 1994. Maybe early Bozeman stuff is cool now. God, it's funny, isn't it? Because like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, think about that. That is the early Bozeman stuff. Because I like the Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. that, that's sort of where I want to. I want to live. And if I'm going, uh, pretending I don't know anything, but you would help. You can help walk people through that. Yeah. Can people reach out to you directly? Yes. So I, I people book calls. So you can talk to me just a video chat on. They book through through the website. Um, oh, wow. And then you can also do the you know see the course. I used to have a, a lot more time open. Now it's just Thursdays, uh, for the video calls. Those are so fun. I helped. Uh, connect someone who is who had a ridiculous amount of money he's like money is no object i want to own a 59 or a 60 uh standard can you help me find a burst and so that was one of the most fun uh that's a fun journey yeah that's a crazy journey too so that ended up being john schultz the the burst that he had flown to south africa to get Jesus. that ended up going to this guy in houston who had booked a call with me and you're involved in that. Mm -hmm. That's a fun little thing. Yeah. And so some books that it's, it, there's obviously a little fee to it. Yeah. And then that's it. There is no way that it will not save you, you know, the 50 bucks or whatever. Yeah, you'll save thousands perhaps. Like it's, yeah. it's just even learning the negotiating tips if you want to or, mm -hmm. or what to look for. And, and, and also like the thing I, when you're in the vintage game, you sort of alluded to it. There's forgeries. Ooh, there's ooh. repairs that are, that you won't notice that are yeah. Like, they're non original bridges. If you don't know the game at all, you can get hurt really quickly. Yeah, more, guitars with more variables are where you get the most problems, especially, yeah, like on a Les Paul or a Stop Tail guitar, you all of a sudden have what? One, two, three, four. You have six pieces that could be changed and you wouldn't know and they would really affect the value. And 
That's why I usually would say like acoustics, there are fewer variables and there are less things to hide behind or for, for shops to, or for unscrupulous sellers to and gloss sometimes over. It's, like, it's not always unscrupulous sellers. A lot of them just don't know what yeah. they're selling too. And I think, you know, they go online, they see stuff priced at reverb and then they want to like put the, um, hey, good morning. They want to put the, um, <laughs> the, that price, the price that's being asked is that's the price they think is going to be the price it sells at. Yeah, too. yeah. And there's a lot of negotiating that goes into these. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the things I get picked on on my channel when people watch me negotiate. Whatever the sticker price is, I'm not paying it. That's just something in me. Uh, like I'm like, uh, and I've also found my negotiating strategy is everybody goes for win-win. I go for win-lose. I want to know when I come up against. And it, uh, I don't mean this in some like I'm taking advantage I'm, of somebody. No, I'm curious what you're. Uh, so win-lose is. Uh, pretend I'm buying a Toyota Camry from you. You're yes. a car dealer. I live in Texas. Yes. This is from a marketing book and a negotiating book. But it's like, hey, I'm really interested in this in this car. Could you throw in? Uh, I need fog lights. Could you throw those in? And you're like, yeah, sure. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. I need snow tires. Can you throw in snow tires? Sure. Like I live in Dallas. Like, all right. Can you give me the Highlander kit? No. That's where I get to. I want you. I want to push you to a place where you say no. We're okay. like, no, no, no. This is the best deal you can get. Right. And okay, like, that makes don't sense. be unreasonable. Yeah, like, uh, and, and you can keep pushing a little bit. I, I will, see, I'm funny when I negotiate. I'm sort of the opposite. I, I understand the, the game a bit, so I'm like, hey, I'll often ask like, what's the best? Because I'm dealing with shops mostly. Yeah, yeah. Or like an individual, and I know most. I'm like, what's yeah. the best you can do on this? They give me a number. I'm like, I'll think like, that's fair. Or I'll say, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm gonna pass. And I pass. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like a, I'm a one sort of one number. I don't like to do the back and forth thing. Yeah, a lot. It's just it's because yeah, and I'm very straight to when people are negotiating with us. I'm like, here's the best we can do. They're yeah. Like, can you do this? I'm like, eh, no. This yeah. is the best we can do. Yeah. I, I always build in a little bit of buffer. I'm like, here's my number, and I'll come up 10 percent, 15 percent. We just don't know how to figure out percentages yet, so we're still working on that. We haven't gotten the new. What's that? Uh, that um. That. That tool you said earlier. Oh, the abacus. Yeah, abacus, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was a slide rule or an abacus, what we were talking about. My dad always brings up slide rules to me, which I think is really funny. Yeah. Like, Gotta get your slide rule from that. Like, he knows it's a joke. But it's like when my grandfather had like the ticker tape machine that the ticker tape would still yeah. print out the stocks. I'm like, that was so cool. <sighs> no, so what's your, um, we, we, we did a video the other day just talking about Martins and Taylor's son, mm -hmm. but what's your, what's your favorite new guitar out there right now? Here's the price range. Under two thousand dollars. I got mine. I would say like, well, I'll answer acoustic and electric. I'm saying uh, acoustic. Okay, for an acoustic guitar, probably a Martin Triple O Fifteen SM. That was mine. That was mine. Mm -hmm. Hundred I'd say uh, that or the slotted headstock one of it. Mm -hmm. I love that one. Or the D if you're a D guy. All yeah, all fifteen series Martin. All the way. Yeah, mahogany, lightly built, and I just noticed the ones out here they have the black tuners now instead of. They've switched over instead of just the all chrome. Yeah. So it, it's a cool. It's a uh, sharp looking. It's a it's a, you know it's an it's a basic, mm -hmm. corduroy looking guitar, but it, man, it gets the job done. Mm -hmm. it sounds great. I'd say it sounds better than guitars twice the price. Sometimes. Seriously. Yeah. And uh, you know if I'm if I don't want to do the Martin Taylor wise under 2K, I'm looking at 214 CE plus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not the deluxe necessarily, unless I want to have a little more bling in a nicer case. I'm I'm a 214 CE plus guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good choice too. It's tricky. It's um or the um I'm trying to think of the worst guitar. I've played. <laughs> I can't think. Of it. I'm not gonna say it. Is the the new Alvarez Laureates? I have not. They're like those. brand new. Um, they do a finish called Daybreak, so they're like almost a burst. They look a little mm. aged. -y. They're they're cool. They're fourteen forty nine, um, but it's solid for a Sitka top and then East Indian rosewood back and sides. That's, that's good. And they're solid. All yeah, way. all solid. So that, yeah, that they, those just came out. I just played one for the first time two days ago. Um, yeah. Can I have it say Gibson or Martin on it? Or, yeah. <laughs> I got a sticker guy. Okay. I mean, we had a mandolin come in recently, an Ibanez mandolin that yeah. somebody had put CF Martin. God bless them. <laughs> I love the CF Martin mandolins. Those yeah. are my favorites. They're my favorites. Yeah. Wasn't even a tater bug. It do doesn't matter. No, I, I love those. Uh oh. <laughs> Hagley is a lost star. I missed out on some sweet guitars. I've also got some sweet. Hagley is. It, it is a lost start, but it's it, well, it's it's become so, it's so different with the dawn of the internet. Yeah, you know, so it's we've we found that it's it's changed it all, and 
a lot. It's weird when I get someone like on Reverb will reach out, like just send an offer in with no text to it. Yeah. It's like, if you charge $2,000, $1,000. We don't mm. even respond to that. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's like, or just $1,500. I'm like, we're just saying, hey man, this is, I love this guitar. Personalize it a little bit. That's my strategy. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to be much more akin to maybe making a deal. Because mm -hmm. we don't have to sell them. Yeah. We can hang on to them. And, yeah. My favorite strategy, I haven't heard this much until the last year, when people will just say, like, what's the least you would take for it? And that's from like, what's the most you would pay for it? Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's a good point. A hundred dollars more than that is my price. Okay, here we go. Question. What's your view on buying parking lot guitar and <laughs> buying meet up parking lot guitar without plugging it into an amp? I have my views on it. Do you have your views? Yeah. Uh, battery powered amps are pretty cheap now. So I, I bring a Mustang Micro. Good answer. Um, I'm usually okay. We're savvy enough with electronics that I'll, yeah. I'll, I can fix it yeah. if it's not working. It's yeah, a yeah. pot, it's a solder point. We can handle it. We've done it. Derek mm -hmm. and I, who's behind the cameras right now, have actually met in Walmart in Rayford and we bought two Gibsons in the parking lot there. Mm -hmm. It was nice. And that was a fun. That was a fun that afternoon. Was early, that was early in. That was early. That was in our. That was in our early days. When we were young men. I've bought a lot of guitars that way. Because just a lot of people don't want to meet at houses because they don't. You know, it's just. No, I have. I get that. I have my rules. I don't go to your house. You don't come to my house. I had a. I had a scary moment where, I went to someone's house in the middle of the mountains in Virginia in Nelson County. I went to this cabin, told no one I was going there, had 1100 bucks in cash in my pocket, and I go into this guy's house, and then I'm like, hey, how about $900? <laughs> and, he was, and he walks across the room, closes the door, and locks the deadbolt, turns around and says, hey, man, only you, me, and Jesus know you're here. Jeez, that's oh, awesome. Oh, shit, oh, there it is. Look, ha, there's that other $200. Please don't kill me. I would like to go home. <laughs> did, did it work out okay? Yeah. Bought a Larvae OM9 and paid full price. But yeah, so many lessons were learned that oh, that's day. Fine. That's like, I just showed Dylan at the shop the, um, the clip from A Bronx Tale, like when the bikers go to mess up the bar. Have you seen that movie? Uh -uh. It's a great movie. And like, it's a great line. Like, then they, he lets them have a drink there. Then, he, he, then they mess up the bar, but then he locks the door. And he goes, now she can't leave. <laughs> and then, then all the power in their bodies drain out. Yeah. And all the mobs just come through the back <laughs> and just beat the living crap out of them. Great moment in movie history. Robert De Niro actually plays a non-mobster in this movie, one of the few in history. Oh. It's a great, great YouTube clip, but the whole movie's kind of fun. Um, I saw somebody just asking right there about what Fender Master Builders would be good to watch from the used market. Um, obviously, you know, John Cruz, his stuff has sort of gone through the roof ever since his departure from Fender, and mm -hmm. then now he's not building John Cruz Customs at the moment. That's one. Uh, any of the John English, the older stuff, great guitars, but modern builders like Vincent Van Treat, Dale Wilson's are on fire right now. If you can get one, and especially if you're one of my friends that watches a lot in Hawaii, I know you're always looking for them and you buy them from Italy and France or wherever the heck you mm. find them, you weird man. But I love you, <laughs> David. Um, yeah, but no, it's it, th those are the guys I look for. I'd, I'd start looking at um, Levi Perry a little bit too. Just he's, he's got a few, but not many out there that are there's not any used ones really. Yeah. He's, he's the newest of the master builders, but he's also one of the hottest new ones. He went from a four month wait list to almost two years overnight. Whoa. Like overnight. It was like, pfft. he owes me a lot though since I've, um, I, I donated some of my ear hairs to him. Oh. Just so he could have some facial hair. There you go. So he's, he's had a transplant on his beard, so he, <laughs> he, he cuts the cue for us. <laughs> but that'd be, that'd be the Fender ones. Okay, there's, there's one down there. What should someone pay for a used custom shop across the team, small team, yeah. or master builds? It's it's all over the place, really. I th I think they're in the in the threes for teams right now. You, if, if you get like in the mid to high threes, you're getting a pretty mm -hmm. good deal right now because the pff, custom shops are starting right now for NOS, non relic, non hand wheel pickups, no flame, like forty two hundred dollars is your entry That's point now. It's a lot of money. It's, um, and they're going, someone asked me the other day, like, what's the range? It might have been you. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah. like $4,200 to $25,000. Yeah. Realistic range. You can spend twenty five k without realizing you're getting there. Hmm. <sighs> the left-handed market. Hey, nobody's concerned. If you're still listening, we actually have four lefty like, custom shops and mm -hmm. PRS private stocks right now in the shop. That's, and we have more. 
I just checked our queue. We have more lefties coming. Wow. And we've had probably 20 lefties in the past like year or so come and go. What, there's, uh, there's a semi-hollow, a lefty semi-hollow up there. In the three Fender Custom Shops right next to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Jonathan, stock one. Jonathan and I had a, had a moment of like, oh my gosh, that guitar's so cool. Too bad it's a lefty. And it was like, that's what a lefty feels like Always. all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, lefties don't even come to shops anymore. So yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. And there's Southpaw guitars in Texas. Great place yeah. for your lefty resource. Uh, one of my goals with the Fender Custom Shop is I do want to have so many Fender lefties that we, they have an option again. Because there's yeah. not many of them, but it's nice. As I, I, I believe you're, you're underserved. We ordered a bunch of these years ago before the crazy lefty tax happened. Because now... Fender and PRS both charge like over $1,000 to make a guitar lefty. That is... Hell-raisingly insane, if you ask yeah. me. I like, I get it. Like, I get it from the manufacturing side, but that's really sad. I kind of get it, but I, I don't... I'm not really okay with it. You know, it's, I think it's crazy. Let's look at what Sir is saying. Potential buyers that show up at my house sometimes get squirrely when they come in and see my trained attack dog walking around in an assault rifle in the corner. Surrender, that's a horrifying yeah. picture you just painted of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it might be true, though, because I think he does have a giant dog. And I, and I know Surrender's a little bit, I'm not going to say off his rocker, but special. That's an intense. So that, that, that would be funny. I, I do like moments like that. That makes me happy. I also find... Which it's funny. This is I'm a very sociable and relatable person, but there's a tech, there's a game, there's a tactical thing happening when I'm negotiating. So any information about me or my life or what else I own can and will be used against me in negotiations. In a court of law or negotiations so, in this case. So for me, where I'm like, I, I've had that where people come to my house. Uh, recently, I had a guy come to my studio and he wanted and he was buying at a '71 Guild D40. And he looked around and saw, you have a Martin Authentic, you have a couple of handmade guitars, you, you have, have a pageant, money. you like, you got money. And so then I realized, like, I definitely lost some negotiating power there. Uh, Little did he know how poor you actually are. You <laughs> yeah. <know? laughs> it's like, you have money. No, I'm guitar poor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guitar. Yeah. I do not have money. Yeah, so Jeff made a good point. It's like, when you actually agree on a price and then show up and try to, like, haggle it down after agreeing on it, I'm not okay with that necessarily. Like it's like, I missed it. I was reading something else. Oh, to agree on a price and show up and offer a lower price is, you know. Yeah. yeah tell, tell people you're going to negotiate on the site. And like, if you're going okay. like, to negotiate, like, it's I'll come and see a guitar. I'm not agreeing on the price. I will negotiate on site though. Yeah, yeah. I do because I, I did not agree. I, you're asking $1,000 for it. I would like to come see your guitar. I don't agree to buy it at that. Like, if, if mm -hmm. I say, like, hey, can I buy the guitar at 1000 We made a deal digitally, handshake done, but I would like to be able to negotiate a bit. I, I try to get within 15, 20 percent where I'm like, hey, I, if everything checks out or I'll have some some phrase, like if Cute everything thing. checks out, if I like it, if it all looks good when I get there. But when you get there and you're like, well, there's more wear on the guitar, there's a tuner that's broken or like any of those things, then you adjust. But I think it's wrong. And what I did in that, like going to the cabin was like, the guitar was there, it was fine, and I just lowballed him at the last second. When, and I had to do that with a gentleman I bought a Jaguar from recently, too. He's a really, really great guy. It was, a, it was a fun, he was awesome in the transaction. Got the guitar, we took it apart. I found it had been routed for like a humbucker at one point underneath. I'm like, this hurts the value a bit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like dramatically, because it's all the original pickups, original pots and everything, but there's been some, you know, cosmetic destruction mm -hmm. underneath the fretboard that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost a few hundred dollars for yeah. my or I'll send you the guitar back. And then he was super cool. We agreed on it. It wasn't a bad, it was, it was, it was totally fair. Uh, and the D18, nobody's, nobody's concerned. You just got your D18 Street Legend. Ooh. Those guitars are really cool. They look cool. And they, um, it, they, it's crazy. If you touch them, the photo finish. Is the, that what it is? The D18 Street. <laughs> it's, so it's like, it's the one that's relic like Kurt Cobain's. Okay. But it's like, it's a photo. So it's laid on digitally like a burn on okay. photo. It's not like it's relic at all. Oh. It's really weird. So you touch it oh, yeah. smooth as a baby's bottom. But they're really good guitars. Is that? It, it's just strange when you touch it, it sort of throws your brain off. Because it seems like those, all the Street Masters so far, I guess that's the Street Legend. But yes. The Street Masters have been like great materials that are lower grade than they would typically use in other guitars. So like Adirondack Spruce, what was Madagascar, Rosewood on the 16s. Um, yeah, there's. But. They like relic them and kind of make them look a little. Yeah, in the fifteens, they, they did that a little bit, and it's and they, they'll take out like maybe they'll put rosewood instead of, Evan. Well, they have it on the fifteens as well. Never mind. I don't yeah. Know. Just like different. There's something different that's less on the fifteen street, 
versus the 15 M. Okay. I can't remember what the what the material was. It's just slightly. Oh, we got mm -hmm. something. What do we got? What is the typical percentage we should be realistically looking asking to get off MSRP on a new high Ooh. end Gibson custom shop Fender custom shop guitar? No dealer bias, Baxter. Well, you should pay full price. Yeah. Because no, no. Um, you can't often get anything off on certain pieces. There will be none. It'll be um. But if, I mean, I think. But ten. But know, even maybe. then, like, but gone are the days of that thirty percent of headroom, like. There's, there's no, there's no list there's anymore. No, well, that's that whole thing based off. There's no MSRP thing. That was that thing that was sort of an artificial pad, that was pre like the whole map yeah. period. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't real. But I mean, like you can like obviously negotiate for free shipping if they're charging shipping. Get an approval period to view the guitar. You always, we always have that with us. I mean, you can look for maybe five to ten percent maximum. But here's a, I mean, here's something I tell most people that ask me this too. I was like, I, we don't negotiate a lot on some of these pieces because I consider our team to be some of the best people in the entire music business. They're paid accordingly, and I cannot afford to operate the business mm -hmm. if we are taking off of that. So yeah. we have the best people in the game. I love them to death. I do believe in making a decent amount of money to work in a guitar shop and have fun, which we get to do a lot of. But that's you know, you, that's you're paying for like the electricity, not just you know, the, the people. It's the same as in any other place. But, you know, I think but some of the older stuff, mm -hmm. if it's been sitting on the wall for a while, that's where you can get some, some business going. That's what, do you want to mention the thing you told me about when custom shops take a while to get here, their pricing? Oh, yeah, it's like, well, it's just, it's, it's nice that, like, when we ordered custom shops years back, like, the, the custom shop price locks. So it's nice in that way. So right now the ETA is switching though. So it used to be about, it could be anywhere from 12 to two years. Yeah. 12 months to two years. And now we're sort of locking more into like that eight month, 12 month rotation. So that we're not okay. seeing those window gaps anymore. To have, because during the COVID times, there was these weird price increases. Yeah, when it's like you're boom, just a boom, vertical like, climb. All of a sudden it's 15% more. Gosh. And, you know, but if you ordered a guitar here, like and lock that data in, it's safe. So when you order a custom shop piece, it locks it in, thank the gods. That, yeah. That, that's a, that's a good Manu point other too. manufacturers don't do that. A lot of times, like, you know, if yeah. I order a piece for a customer with other big manufacturers, like, hey, here's a new price, mm -hmm. you, go, you have to go tell your customer that it's yeah. cost more now. Well, that's what um, your money coming into a guitar shop can look very different depending on how you get money to them. So, like, an e check or like an e check is very Cash different. Cash is king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you'll save three and a half percent. We we looked at Hometown, how much we spent in credit card processing. Ooh. And I, I never knew this, but when somebody pays, this is me just being naive. But when someone has a points card that gives them extra miles or extra money back for certain things, the vendor pays those. Uh, so, because yeah. we found somebody, somebody bought a very expensive guitar from us and they wanted to use an Amex. And yeah, we're like, and we're giving Express. nine and a half percent. Like we would pay nine and a half percent to get that money. We've negotiated in our rates with Amex, which so we're pretty good with it, but it's still it's higher. Yeah. It's for sure higher. So if you do use American Express, know you are taking it a little bit out of like the, the shop side of things. Yeah. So it's, it's just part of, it's part of the thing. What new brand should we be looking to as investment pieces? Oh, there's a whole presupposition on the second half of that question that is stressful. <laughs> well, what to do you me. think? I think guitars are not investments. I, that, that, I mean, that's. You should put money into boring things that, like the, stocks, that, bonds, that the government regulates. <laughs> um, yeah. The guitar. And, uh, so, we'll, so we were just got back from the guitar show and the, the B3 Asheville guitar show, and we noticed that the '60s stuff sort of hit a ceiling, and it's come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little trying. They're still asking outrageous amounts at the guitar shows. It's yeah. it's like they haven't paid attention to what's happening online. Sometimes. No, those guys got caught holding the bag in 08. And they've yeah. just been like, like well, please, it's, anyone. It's only 85,000. Please take it. It's only 38,000. Um, I mean, they're asking, like, you know, when I saw like an ES175 for like 49.95. What? Like, what? And then he's like, well, drop it to 39.95. I'm like, what? It's like, let's drop another thousand. Yeah. This needs to be 29.95. Give me like, 2,200 bucks. That's like, that's the price. And you yeah. should be asking 29.95 for that 1961 yeah. ES175, not starting at 49. Dropping the prices aren't there anymore. 70s stuff is going up a little bit, which is but, insane. But please be careful. Gosh, be careful. The amount of people that are like, I got a J50 Deluxe for $600, and then you're like, 
Oh gosh, like that I, thing's worth 300 bucks. I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, double X brace or, shoe box. Or Derek and I were seeing the pancake bodies. Yeah. Like people were asking like $3,800, non original <laughs> pickups. Like it's it's not, it's been a refit or yeah. something. Like, hey. It's only it's 14 crazy. pounds. Um, hey, I, I like that nobody's concerned. I don't, I, don't, I don't personally haggle with big box corporations, mom and pop shops, pay with the app. We appreciate that. And, yeah. and honestly, it is, it's tough to keep the lights on. So it's like it's a different. Like we're we're not Sweetwater. Yeah, and when you when you look at like the people who are doing what you're doing, what we're doing at hometown, it is passion and hard work and restless. Like you don't do it because you want to get rich. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, the only person who's getting rich here is Derek behind the cameras. He's just counting dollar bills mm -hmm. all day. He's he's like he's like going to the club. <laughs> we have a hot tub at our local club right now. Um, it, it's uh, the VIP room has a hot tub in the back of Ooh. it, which is really fun. I don't want to get in that water. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What is that floating? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, but, but no, go back to that, like, that, that one question earlier, though, with like what new brands. Let's yeah. say you do want to do an investment. There's certain ones, like some of those John Cruz customs that came out yeah. were good because like, the they're gone now. Yeah. You can't get any more. It's gone. I think there's certain, certain Fender custom shops some of the highly limited runs. Mm -hmm. I don't buy these limited runs of when they're doing like a thousand. It's like it's limited edition. There's a thousand pieces. <laughs> well, that's the other. Everything is limited because we live in a finite world. Right. And so you're like, just on what scale? Um, so they, but if it's a really small or like a really, if there's yeah. certain master builders, yeah. they do tend to go up sometimes. So you can do that. I, my Collins mm -hmm. was a good investment. You saw the sticker on that. Oh I paid less gosh. than that. You know, cause I, the sticker price was six something thousand, I think, yeah. on it. But I bought this, you know, probably 12, yeah. 14 years ago, maybe more. I mean, yeah. Who knows? I'll, I gotta find out. 14 years probably. Um, but I, pay, I probably paid like close to 52. Mm -hmm. and, and now those are starting at 11K for that, mm -hmm. that model guitar. So I would say overall, like what new guitar will be worth more or at least keep up with it? For me, I would also go in the direction of. Because um, you're going master builders, I would go collector pieces. I, I would go with like specific, best in the world kinds of guitars. You're going to spend a whole lot more money, but I would go for like what? Uh, Leo Buendia, like one of his acoustics. I mean, you're going to spend what thirty five thousand dollars for one of his, and they will never be worth less because he only makes eight a year. Um, um, Gage Halland, Allen, like a Greenfield guitar. Languedoc for the electrics, they're weird. Yeah. They're, they're made up in Vermont, but he only makes a small batch and they're yeah. $25,000 now, but what's you the can't guy, get them. What's the guy in Canada? Do he, Joey Landreth has one. Sora I, I don't talk to Can Canadians. Okay. They're weird people. Mm -hmm. They live in a cold land with sadness and beautiful women. Sorry, I fell in love too many times when I was in Canada back in my <laughs> pre-married days. One, one, one young lady named Jennifer. Jennifer Lorraine. What if she's watching right now? She would never watch this. With she, English she subtitles. No, she has no ideas I exist anymore. <laughs> she worked at this, um, God, she's just... Let's find all, her. All I did was, talk, all I did was talk with her, too, but man, man what, a, what a wonderful, <laughs> yeah. beautiful young woman that was. Montaleon. This was, the, I mean, this was like 20 years ago almost. Not quite, but like, probably like yeah, eight days. Yeah. But yeah, just gotta love France. Yeah. Um, okay, but I think coming down to earth on like what, what guitars Sorry. would be worth more within a little bit. Um, I think that's such a complicated game to play. It is complicated. Uh, but I would, I Wait, would say he, like... He corrected us. He said maybe collector's pieces is a better phrase. Not like an okay, so okay, like okay. Stuff you're going to hold on to and cherish. Like I think some of the, some of the stuff coming out of the Gibson Acoustic right now is, is, is choice. Like some of that Murphy SJ SJ200s. Yes. Like those... Custom shop. That's one of those. That, that is the least depreciated guitar I can find. Every J200 and SJ200 is worth about what they were new, most are Which worth more. Which is really rare. Yeah. It's like, there are a lot of brands you're gonna buy and they depreciate immediately off the bat. We're not mm -hmm. gonna go through that laundry list right now just because mm -hmm. I don't wanna ruffle too many feathers, but some of them you're gonna lose, you know, 40 percentage points mm -hmm. immediately. That's what, it's a video that I did a bunch of research for and wrote the script for and filmed, and then I was like, I can't do this. Oh, uh, yeah, my my yeah. number one. And I was like, this is not helpful and it will only hurt people's feelings. Yeah, and you'll get people mad at you. Yeah. And, and that's the point of this is fun. We all buy yeah. and collect guitars because we love it. I, yeah, I think, so I think coming out of that, like my thought is be really careful expecting, like 
you get yourself in trouble when you need your guitars to be worth more or to mean more to you than they do. Just that is enjoy funny. Them. Andy Perez said his 60th anniversary Jaguar Ultra Lux. And yeah. So some of those Fender things, they, they had these weird little yeah. few. They'd make a few and then they discontinued it. Yeah. There's this triple humbucker Strat. It's gone through the roof. Wow. It, it's like it doesn't. It was, it was a, a triple humbucker Tele. Was that it? Black, yeah. It was like a, it wasn't a mission. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's it, with the gold hardware. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It, it was like, you know, it was like an $1,800 guitar, I think, or even less. Yeah. yeah. And then now it's like like $35, yeah. $4,000. So, sometimes those weird things that don't ever sell very well the first two years, yeah. then just catch fire somehow. I remember sitting on some of those as anchors, and you're like, yeah. what is happening? Well, that's the whole thing with, like, it is insane that Les Pauls took off, like, 59, 60, you know, or like 58, 59, 60, they were such bad sellers at the time. Um, and it was not until yes. what, like 68, 69, that they really started to take off? Right, yeah, it's, it, it's a funny thing in the guitar market. And we've, yeah. we've watched the used offsets go from you know, 2,500 to 5,000 all the mm -hmm. way up to 15,000 for the custom color yeah. offsets for the yeah. pre-CBS period, we're talking, which, is, which is fun. What kind of depreciation hit this somewhat rare acoustics, Martin Double Triple O Forty Two Marquee. They've had neck resets, top cracks. So okay, Ooh. Jeremy, hit that one. Okay, what kind of depreciation hit? Do you? Okay, um, twenty percent typically. But then all those all those complicating factors. If they've had neck resets, that might actually make them worth more. Um, Strange, or, right? Yeah, or less, because you're like, well, there's a five hundred dollar bubble on this guitar. Either you're going to pay for it or I'm going to buy it and pay it and pay you less. But then top crack really affects value. If yeah. there's any finish work with that crack. Neck breaks obviously affects yeah. value tremendously. What's your percentage? So for me, I have my percentage. If there's finish work on a guitar, I have a... No, what is yours? Do you have one? 50%. Like, you're, it's it's worth 50% less. Or yeah. Or sometimes it's strange that we were, we were at the guitar show, we were seeing guitars that had finished disasters and they were charging like outrageous amounts for them. I'm like, eh. it's, um, it's, it's crazy, but they were cool guitars. But um. I, yeah, I do. I envy the, the confidence of some of those guys that just ride those guitar show booths every weekend. I'm like, what? Like you've had, you have hauled this thing to 12 different states for $30,000 for a 70s three bolt strap. It is funny. I think about those guys' lives. Like yeah. they're just going from like show to show like yeah. and they just can't move those because a lot of the guitars do not sell. Mm -hmm. And it's just it'd be depressing. But when you talk to those dudes, it just takes one. It does. And they one. live in a camper, they've got a dog with them like mm -hmm. I get it. I don't want that life. No. Um you don't you can't live in a camper with a dog right now. No. You have humans to yeah. feed. Yeah. I was like, "Wait a minute. I, I did talk about him on one of our proper form videos about He's on the single market, but sorry, ladies, he's taken. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, know, I know, everyone's like, oh, they're, they're crying mm -hmm. there. Um, okay, what are people age 30 <laughs> or younger collecting? Ooh. Or are they collecting at all? I'd say yes. A lot of it is pedals, too. Yes. Because it's an affordable entry game into the vintage stuff. Sean, one of our young guys, too, he's, I think he's uh, 15. Mm -hmm. He works with us, the curly hair guy. He's not 15. Um, but he's really into, like, vintage pe pedals. Okay. He just got, he got like, um, Space Echo the other day. Ooh. Um, he just he bought some cool, ah, I forgot what else he got recently. Yeah. But those are affordable things. They're not cheap. Yeah. I mean, you're spending a thousand plus dollars. Yeah. To, but, but they're volatile enough that it's really exciting. That you're like, oh, like, I have this just one that I had and it's worth 500 bucks now. And if you want to, like, and I remember one of my friends who bought a Klon a few years ago on a drunk reverb thing. Yeah. And he, bought, he paid $1,500 for it. Like, oh, I, got, I shouldn't have done this. It was years ago. And then he sold it like the next day. And he's like, God, I wish I would have kept that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you should have kept that. I had a Klon forever ago. It just came in a box of pedals in New Orleans. It's just funny. Yeah. Paid 300 bucks for it. Sold it for 500. Thought I was in tall cotton. Yeah, I just killed on that one. I made it. Oh, it. nailed it. But I'd say pedals are doing really well. And then um, some of the, they can get in some pre-owned Gibson custom shops I've seen too. Like not the Murphy stuff, but pre-Murphy labs. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the, the VOS and, and such in there. Mm -hmm. and that's, what I've, that's what I've noticed. How about you? Mm, uh, young people collecting. Yeah, young people collecting. I, I was thinking through, so our Sean is a guy named Vinny. Um, and Vinny is really into Gibson acoustics. Okay. Um, and he finds like problematic Gibson acoustics. 
So he's got a J200 with a neck crack. And LGs and stuff. Yeah, and then an, an LGO and a J50. Um, he's unusual. He's an old soul. So, but, yeah, so Sean, yeah. that's the neat thing about some of those cats. So, Sean doesn't even have social media. Really? He just doesn't believe in it, which I think awesome. is fantastic. Yeah. Like, let, let that be for the... Um, have you ever heard of a, an Esteban guitar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Asked by... Oh, Paul. they're awful. They're... What? No. Mm. You see, they, if people that watch casino guitars know I am an Esteban oh. truest. You, you're one of the hats, right? I, it's Johnny Esteban. has the hat. Yeah. And Derek has the hat. <laughs> but um, I no, I have, we've have had, at one point, we bought someone's collection. It was a collection of Esteban guitars. <laughs> it, not a joke. It was awesome. We, we Dude, at how much did QVC make off of that? I think that's they did. And, and, well, he's one of the top selling guitar sellers in the history of guitar sellers. Yeah. And that's what he said. Well, he, he, broke into, he broke into new territory. He did. I think he like started the whole Keith Urban thing. And like he was, he's the forefather. Have you played one of those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got one and. And one of our guys traded in. He's like, we only have $200 in it. It was like, we let we lit $200 on fire. And then somebody came in. They're like, you have the CDs with it? Would you take the guitar and the CDs for $500? Like, mm -hmm. yes. So it sold last summer. Got but it. I was, like, all the decals, every line on that guitar, the binding, the rosette, everything was stickers. Which makes it even better, I feel like. It's, it's like, like a plywood box. It's like, um, what's his face? Um, the car from... Cars. Yeah. What's his name? Bla Lightning, Lightning McQueen. Yeah. See, I get confused with that because I've watched that movie a thousand yeah. times. But we call Lightning McQueen to my family. We call him Dusty, as well from Planes. Oh yeah. Because like, like, we used to watch Planes all the time. And I'm like, oh, this is like this is the now he's a car and something happens. Hmm. So we always call him. There's Dane Cook and Owen Wilson. I know. God, that was like Dane Cook's. Like it's, Planes is definitely not as good. Yeah. As Cars. The Fire and Rescue one's pretty cool. I do like Planes Fire and Rescue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen them all. I've seen them all a thousand times. It's yeah. upsetting. The trick to kids, what the kids' movies is, don't watch it. Don't pay attention to the story, because once you're in, once I knew what was happening in Frozen, I was like, she's going to the ice palace, and then I would have to sit down and I'd want to watch. It, it, because Frozen's actually good. Yeah. I, I hear Frozen Three is going to be not so good. Frozen Two is funny. Yeah, Frozen Three. I've heard some of the, it's it's taken a, it's taken a turn for special. Um, yeah, I saw some comments there talking about Chuck Levins. If you, if you go to Chuck Levins, which Scherinder does, ask for Carlos. Carlos Romero, he's fantastic. He is the, again, he is the salsa champion of the greater metro area of the D.C. area, Whoa. which is hilarious. He often is seen sporting his, this is weird, his pearl handle pistols. Oh! Like the old, like, they're chrome six-shooters. So that's, his name is Carlos. Ask for him. He's amazing. He, he's, he often is just skulking back. got long, beautiful Carlos Santana hair. Wonderful guy, beautiful man. Surrender. Oh my oh. God! Look at that. Hey. Look at that. That 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 just pays for his bus ticket home now. <laughs> We're gonna send him out of here. Get him out of here. Get a shot. Get a shot. He's oh. asking for shots. Oh so shoot! Yeah, shot. give me the bottle. You I have, am. Yeah, you, you. Sure. You have to do a shot now. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know what time it is? Did you say shots in it? It's ten yeah. o'clock. Oh God! It's a, oh God! Shots, boys. Oh. This is expensive. This is a, this bottle again. This Ooh, bottle, Lugable. I've never had Lugable. This one. bottle was sent to us from our friend Jad in Brunei. If you haven't heard of Brunei, Brunei is a country that is right next to Malaysia, I believe, and is one of the two existing um, fascist monarchies in the world. Ooh. So, and Jad, I was just emailing with Jad this morning. I don't know if I finished the email because then I started talking to you. That's what happened, Jad. Take so, a if, shot. sorry. Wow. This is okay. not something you shoot normally, but we're doing it for you. Wow. Smell like that's good. Mm. Whoa. It's peaty, but not as peaty as it was when we opened it. Oh. Here you go, Derek. Top. Gracias. Oh, surrender. I, saw, I love I you. Fought. I fought it. Surrender, you're in trouble. But I hate Ooh. you. Because I have to work the rest of the day, and we're going to start doing this. Once you get triggered in. It's a smoky. It is, it's, but it's, it's smooth. Yeah. It's, um, but really good. This reminds me of mezcal. You ever had mezcal? Boom. Uh -huh. um, we just mm -hmm. both did this. It's like mm -hmm. a kung fu moment. Mm -hmm. um, surrender. That was. <laughs> thanks for making Derek do it too. <laughs> <clears throat> the Cubans. We don't, we don't have any Cuban cigars. We should get that though. But then we'd have to smoke, and I can't smoke. It'd just be be a bad start. That was really <laughs> funny. Surrender. Thank you so much. That was really. There's trouble. Yeah, he's always trouble. you, William Robinson. Buttergrats yeah. Jet Player Edition from Baxter last year. <laughs> I knew, and he confirmed that it would depreciate when it went out the door. Buy a guitar because you like it, period. I mean, the, the, yeah, because people ask me, is this going to go on Valmec? No. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't want I'm like a lie to anybody. This, 
Yeah. It's not like a, it's not as bad as a car. <clears throat> certain ones are as bad as cars. You buy certain guitars, like that's going to be worth half the minute you mm -hmm. walk out. So the only other way around this, which is a, Ooh, that's a pretty on an empty stomach. Uh, <laughs> It's a pretty unfeasible way, and this is largely how I've grown my collection. I only buy used, but there are so many compromises you have to make. I don't get to choose color. I don't really get to cho choose location or when I buy something. And so for me, if you're going to go with, you're going to trade off. And so for that 20, 30%, you get to pick the color. You get to pick the features. You get to build relationships with a retailer. When I, I'm a hybrid buyer myself, like I buy a lot of new and a mm -hmm. lot of used now. It was mostly all new for a while, and then I sort of pivoted, and I'm probably about 50-50 mm -hmm. at this point. I'm sort of going down a vintage rabbit hole yeah. a bit with the electrics and having a lot of fun there. I need to stop. My wife talked about leaving me, but <laughs> she literally just left today, which is cool too. She's on a plane, <laughs> going on an island adventure with her girlfriend from Myrtle Beach. And if you're look, if you live near Myrtle Beach and you need a new car, Hadwin White, GM and Subaru, they are sponsors of this channel. They are not, <laughs> but whenever we go down there, they take us out to like Japanese steakhouses. Ooh. I consider that a sponsorship of sorts. Yeah, food sure. Is, food yeah. is money. You benefit monetarily. And no, I but I love them. We bought our Subaru from there, and they're fantastic. Um, Surrender, thank you again. Yeah. Um, Steve at Wildwood is awesome. Steve at Wildwood is, is one truth. of my best friends. I've I've known him for gosh, probably at least 15 years now. And um, he, I, you know, I started as a customer, became friends, and then he's become a mentor through us with the shop. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't say enough strong words about Wildwood. If you're looking for the top tier of the Gibson custom shop, mm -hmm. there's really no other finer shop. He has the best stuff, the best team. They curate their, their materials and they take care of their stuff. They ship it perfectly. And it's just, I'm just solid, honest as the day is long is what I say about Steve. And he has the same sleep schedule as me, I think. My wife, when she met him for the first time, she's like, it's like an old Baxter. Mm -mm. <laughs> she, was, she saw her saw her future. <laughs> she was very upset <laughs> and confirmed. In her she wasn't, no offense to you, not upset by that, but she was just like, oh my God, there's another one like you. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, cause he, he, he's honest to the detriment of his own business, which I appreciate. Oh, but that has to be and the way. It, and that's something I was taught early on and from my father as well. Mm -hmm. And Steve's my guitar shop father. You know, yeah, so love Wild. Well, that's what, you know. To quote Gandalf, not Gandalf, we'll quote Dumbledore instead. To quote Dumbledore, there I comes a time where you have to choose between doing what's right and doing what's easy. Yes. And I think... God, that is a great quote. Right. I can't... I, I'm waiting, so my one kid's mm -hmm. read all the Harry Potters yeah. three or four times through, and we, I'm waiting for the other ones just mm -hmm. to watch the movies because I want them to read the books first. Yeah. So right. my kids have watched up to like the third movie, and then it gets, mm -hmm. a, the, it gets, darker. gets a little too intense. I like when Hermione comes back and she's like a woman. <laughs> Have you seen that SNL skit? Yes. It's, it's hilarious. Um, so what's the best way to sneak a guitar past the lovely wife? Oh. Um, there's, there's multiple ways to do this. You can, um, obviously you can have it shipped to your place of work, shipped to another friend's location. But getting in the house is another story. Buy a guitar that's similar color to the one you have. You know, um, you, the case swaparoo thing where you take yeah, keep the empty case. case and blah, blah, blah. You can do that. There's all sorts of tricks. We can help you do that. We help with receipts all the time. Don't worry. You have one receipt for your wife, one receipt for reality. You know, so she's like, oh, the guitar was only $400. Well, there's an extra zero on that guitar, but you don't, she doesn't need to know about that, or he doesn't need to know about that, whoever's buying the guitar. I like to say it's 50-50, but it's mostly men buying these guitars. Yeah. I feel a bit icky on that stuff. How so? I think the guitar should be good for you it, they have to cause concentric circles of good. So a guitar has to come into your life and make you a better version of yourself that is better for your wife, better for your kids, better for your community. I, th Yeah, I mean, that's a sweet thought. Most wives, we're not going to agree with that concept. Because yeah. the wives do the same thing, too. I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just fun, and I think it's a lot of relationships are set up that way. I think and it's also, like, I'm coming from a place of, like, guitars for me, they're, they are a source of income. And so, like, in my world... I've lost money on two guitars in the thousands of guitars I've wow, owned. Wow, that's crazy. That's yeah. It. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, an old Guild and a Huss and Dalton. How'd you lose money on it? Uh, the Huss and Dalton, just was you that... buy a boutique guitar and then you sell it when you get married. And okay. So I lost like 2100 bucks okay. on that one. The, the okay. other one, I lost $100. That doesn't really count. Yeah. That's like, that's it was like, a guitar I hadn't played for five years. That's the renting of it. You know, I'd say yeah. Like, that's, um, that's not even a thing. But, but yeah, I would, I would Mike say... Mike Lee, thanks for hanging out. Sorry, go ahead. You're good. Uh, I, 
I don't know. That one makes me feel. I don't. I don't know what how to feel about that one. Um, you don't have to feel any way about it. It's just, yeah. like, it's just, that's part of the deal, though. It's like you know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, people do lots that, of well, things. Well, that's like you might be one of those guys like I tell my wife everything, everything about my past, and everything she has to know. Like I don't believe that's a healthy way to live a relationship either, though. Like you know, oh, this is who I slept with in this grade, and this is. What, <laughs> it's like, you don't, they don't need to know these things. Blank slate. Okay. Every yeah. day can be a blank slate. Yeah. So just joyous. <laughs> I live in a weird world. My wife is insane, though. I don't know why she's still married to me. It is funny because you and I are becoming good friends, but we're very, very different people. Yeah, that's how life works. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. I, I think it's just yeah. You were. I was making jokes with my wife, and you're like, I can't believe he's making <laughs> these jokes about sleeping with her best friend with her right there. He's like, oh, she knows. <laughs> best friend's wonderful, and she's on a trip to an island with her right now. Beautiful lady, Adam White, <laughs> Subaru GM. <laughs> it's the best. Or if you're still watching and you need investment advice, Chris Collins, Edward Jones in Wilson, North Carolina. Josh Defnall, Edward Jones. That's my best friend. Well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disparage my, my Oh, got Chris, it. Chris I will not cousin. disparage Josh. Now, Josh is, Edward Jones is great. My father worked with Edward Jones for years. Okay. Um, and my wife worked with Edward Jones for okay. a while, too. It's funny. But um, Chris Collins, Edward Jones, Wilson, North Carolina. He's good looking. And he'll get it done for you. <laughs> That's Chris Collins. He drives a fast car. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what else to say about him. I'm not going to disparage him too much, but I always like to give him a little trash because then someone lets him know that we were talking about him. He's like, damn it, Baxter. <laughs> Stop saying that. Mm -hmm. Great guy, though. Um, yeah. But, uh, oh. Uh, David bought a Fender Jag Strat after watching Baxter do a segment with the Jag Strat. Funny, when I play it, it doesn't sound the same as when Baxter plays I it. I doubt that because every guitar we sell comes with Baxter's sounds built into it. Mm -hmm. It's like my little... You should sell a looper. That is like pre my, preloaded with my, some of my little yeah. standard licks. Because mm -hmm. Jonathan and all the guys know my little descending line in D that I do on yeah. my acoustics all the time. It's like do do and I have the overtones ring out so I can mm -hmm. hear the guitar and what yeah. it does. That's how I test the guitar. I have like I have a few little runs I do. Mm -hmm. hey, David, thanks for buying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Jag, I, I love anything Jag. I love Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's my jam. I really, I had a uh, custom shop jazz master, a journeyman, a couple years ago, and it was the first. It was the first jazz master I'd owned, and it was so good. I love the offsets. They're they're strange birds. They don't do what you think. Like a jazz master is not really jazzy. No, yeah. It's, it's almost spanky. Yep. And you got so when we do custom shop builds with jazz masters, we have a special formula that we do with all of our builds for the pickups, the bridge in particular, just to sort of. Give a little warmer, rounded edge yeah. to it to push it through, and that, that tends to work out in our favor. Good. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes they're unusable in my mind. They're like, meh, 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 meh. I don't like that. They're, yeah, they're very. Yeah, and le if you're not careful, like the bridge is so spanky, and then the neck is so like woofy and boomy. And <laughs> We've gotten that figured out. They're very polar, our, different. I've got one sitting over there that's by Vincent Mantry. That's Ooh. and then that's sitting next to a 65 Jaguar as well. Then I, I've been buying 65 Jaguars left and right. It's a problem. I got stopped. <sighs> Try to get those in that sort of that's the, the transition period. I find it fascinating when, yeah. they, when things are moving. It's like, you know, it's like dating someone right when they're going through divorce. It's just fun. Um, no, so you're asking here, Muddy, Muddy 2 Muddy, Muddy Ho, H2O. I was like, I couldn't read it. <laughs> muddy H2O. That's funny. I was like, Muddy Ho is what I was thinking. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're asking what's the, what's our favorite Fender Master Builders right now? There is, that's a good question. There's a, there's a group. I'm a huge fan of Levi Perry right now, as I said earlier in the thing. His wait list went from like four months to two years overnight. I think Austin McNutt's building some great stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got two right now. Andy Hicks is building some great stuff as well. Obviously, Todd Krause is one of the masters. Um, Greg Fesser builds a neck to die for, and he does something magical with the P90s whenever he does those. I don't know what, but they're better than a lot of other people's P90s I've played. Those are some of my favorites. I have a personal affinity to, to Levi right now because I just think he's weird and cool and zany. And we're, we've become mm -hmm. sort of buddies over this whole, whole thing. And, because I remember when I discovered Vincent Van Treat, when he was an apprentice, is when I first met him. I first met him painting some saddles for um, for for John, I believe John John Cruz at the time. And then I was like, man, that guy's really—he's painting every saddle individually. What is he doing? He's like, he was just—and then he was a then he was apprentice still, and I I met him and I bought all his pieces as an apprentice mm -hmm. before he was even displaying them. I, I saw his works like I want them all. Sometimes you see an artist like those, and he, now he's the, got a ten-year wait list. He can't even order his pieces now. That's awesome. Obviously, Yuri's amazing too, but I just some of his stuff's just out of out of out of create. They're mm -hmm. all they're all really great. That's the thing. Like Jason Smith builds some of the best basses I've ever seen. Some of the best guitar. All of them are great. It's but it's um 
it's what you want them to do. They all sort of have specialties. Some are better at other things than others, and that's that's what we do. It's our yeah. job is to make pair that together. So let us know if you're wanting to do one. We get it done. Man, Jeremy, hmm. how's your guitar playing coming along? Let me ask. So, well, maybe you are in the same spot. Like as a YouTuber, I play guitar very differently when I'm just playing by myself, and when I'm playing with the cameras on. So I just got stuck. I've been in such a plateau the last year and a half of just like I play the same six things when a camera's turned on. It, it is tricky. I get in that same rut sometimes too. And like I, tr I try, I'm always trying different stuff though. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I have my sort of signature things I do, but I'm, I'm I am trying to sort of break out of that mold sometimes. And I'll mm -hmm. be listening to other artists just you know because we were talking like yeah. I, you know we're both Sigur Rós and Explosions and Sky fans, which is funny. I didn't know that anybody else liked that music. <laughs> but I don't play that stuff for yeah, pleasure yeah. either. I just like to listen to it. Yeah. I just love the soundscapey things, and I love Icelandic music. Mm -hmm. But um, and Bjork, if you're watching, I, my heart is still yours. Even though I'm married and have kids and stuff, I, I we could have this weird thruple thing. It's cool. Um, my wife would be cool with that. Bjork or Johnny Depp, we're big fans. That's another whole can of worms. But um, no, I. I do. It's, it's weird. I, I'll be listening to Joe Bonamassalix mm -hmm. and trying to sort of like riff off of some of those. Mm -hmm. I love Greg Koch. He's playing it. He's one of the best guitar players out there on the internet. He does mm -hmm. all the demos for Wildwood. Um, you know, Ariel Posen's are obviously phenomenal, but I can't even begin to figure out what his tunings are. Yeah. And, but I'll try, I'll try to like sort of mm -hmm. borrow and learn a little bit. I, I listen to Fish a lot to just listen to some of the phrasing of Trey mm -hmm. and how he sort of does his lead melodic things. I like major melodic mm -hmm. versus minor more so and yeah. so that's why I try yeah I took two months off where I pretty much I didn't play much guitar and wow. I just took mandolin lessons and you were playing some yeah some tears for fears on mandolin mm -hmm. the other night to go to sleep but yeah mandolin has been fun because for years so nine years I like sold mandolins but I played guitar and I kind of faked it and then one of my daughters was born and I was like I want to be a dual instrumentalist so I bought a good mandolin, a Kentucky similar to... Oh, it's funny, really? Well, yeah, yeah. Because my dad bought me that years ago. Oh, really? Years ago. Okay. Yeah, it was like very similar to one I had. Um, and so years at least. it was, um, it's a great, it's a great instrument because at first you jump in as a guitar player and you just think upside down, but then you're like, well, your fourths and fifths are everything's, your basic notes. Yeah. It's so funny. then you start figuring out, well, how do mandolin players play? And it's quite different. There's so much, the pick is so different, the, your left hand is so different. You're not trying to be perpendicular to frets. You're trying to like really right. curl your fingers. So yeah, that's where my guitar playing has really opened up because I've spent the last chunk of time um, working to not play guitar. I'm assuming it's an F style mandolin. Mine's an A. It's an A. Um, now, I, so I, I bought a. I have a Northfield uh, A5. I'm shocked. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Good question there. Well, because F F mandolins are so it. expensive. They're twice the price, and they're, they sound a little so, less bassy. They're so pretty though. They are. I, mean, it's like I still see, would love one. You see like a proper Gibson or something. Mm -hmm. the, the Northfield, uh, Big Mon, or the Artist. So you're probably not. Are you going to Merle Fest this year or no? I don't think so. Um, okay. Maybe. I don't know. If you need to go, let me know. Okay. I'd, I'd probably get you tickets. Okay. To, like, if you want to It'd be really fun. I mean, it's a fun It's a fun place. I think my brother's getting married one of those weekends. So. I think my wife's going to bring the kids on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so come How far is that from here? Two hours door to door. Oh, okay. So, so it's, and it's west, due west. Yeah, yeah. Like it's pretty much like 40 west, bam. Mm. Then you show up in the great state of Wilkesboro or North Wilkesboro. The, the, the town, it's funny. I, I love that like, there's two Wilkesboros and like mm -hmm. people know that they're very serious and about it. And they know it. why. Yeah, it's only them. It's like <laughs> somebody's telling me the story. I'm like, hey, it's, this is Wilkesboro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the and tax like, code really separated. <laughs> So we're going to wrap it up soon because mm -hmm. Jeremy's got to go back to Virginia. It's true. And he can't stay here long. He's got a wife and kids to make love to, just the wife. Um, so it's, that's where he's got to go soon. Um, any parting words for Jeremy? you got to fire him now or forever hold your peace. Slanderous accusations. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, I seen a good one of those Port City Amps. That guy was great. We were, um, we were talking about maybe doing something with, with him down the road, too. Port City Amps, I love Amy. Oh, yeah. Have you played those? No. They're really, he's a North Carolina maker. I saw the pedals over here, and then I've always seen Rhett talk about his Pearl. He's got a Pearl? Mm -hmm. God, I thought it was a Granville for some reason. I can't remember what Maybe it was. Maybe he Pearl. has. Well, he always talks about the Port City Pearl. Yeah, he's got one of those. He's got the one with the reverb and trim that his does. And it's, it, they're, they're really unique and different and cool, cool, and we like that. And one yeah. of the ones we were playing was going to a very famous player that we we're not allowed to say the name of. <sighs> it's, 
wonderful whoever has that. Garth Brooks. Just, it's wonderful. It's Where are the bodies, Garth? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do love that. <laughs> <laughs> Who does it? That's um, Tom Segura Tom does Segura. that. I, and I thought his new special was great. Yeah. Because I I, I've memorized all of his specials. Dude. I love them. The one is off. I saw that happen. Right there. I love it. Where are the bodies? Okay, we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Surrender, thanks for the tip and to making us um, drink alcohol. That was really cool. And all the best. Guys, really appreciate it. Taylor Swift, lo love it too. Uh, my uh, Andy says, what's Jeremy's YouTube channel link? I don't know. Um, it is, I think it's just YouTube. Posting it into the comments. Posting it in the comments. If you search, don't search. Well, you can search for Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. That'll get you there. But it's just my name, Jeremy Shepard, S-H-E-P-P-A-R-D. I never figured out how to change the name of my channel to Guitar Hunter. That's really funny because you're own, but you're part of um, Garth Brooks owns part of that too, right? It's, yeah, he's a third stakeholder. Okay, so I thought Garth Brooks and Tom Segura own that in collaboration. It's all a bit, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. All mm -hmm. own. Walmart actually owns all of us too. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> and then I guess. Thanks, I Derek, for running the cameras and hitting the buttons. Ain't that the truth? Oh, that's really nice. Uh, I think we're gonna go now, though. But uh, hey, guys, again, thanks for joining us, Jeremy, the Guitar Hunter, Jeremy Shepard. Buddy. Always a pleasure. Always brother. fun. Fun seeing you, man. Thank you. And we're gonna just keep rolling. Let's do it. Roll this out. Actually, one of these. <laughs>